we're going to look at the concept of meetings and some of the issues folks have around meetings. And we're going to look at it in the sense of a July 22 through 25, 2014 meeting with Shell Oil in Houston, Texas. The team meeting was a global team and it was the safety expertise team for Shell exploration and production. This is an example of best practice. Well, there's enough data out there to tell us that a lot of people feel current meetings are off. This particular item that you can read cites three sources that say meetings aren't accomplishing much. And this source says that 70% of meetings don't help them get any work done. And my colleague Harold in Houston, his view of meetings when we worked together in Delaware, Harold would always say, now that your meeting is over, I can go back to work. And I would always say, Harold, a meeting is work. So, for your consideration, a meeting or a workshop. This is my colleague, Bruce Jacobs, currently in Parker, Colorado, just outside of uh, Denver. He's a global manager for operational safety in a shell business, exploration and production, ENP. He recently sent me an email with pre-work requests to team leads, the agenda, the meeting rules, and instructions for a gallery walk. What did he have as pre-work for the team leads? He gave each a chart. In this case, he asked this individual to place in the photographs of each of the people on his team and where they are physically located. Now remember, this fellow works in London, actually in Aberdeen, Scotland, and all of these people from all of these countries report to him through virtual tools and the very occasional face-to-face. Then, each individual team lead was given a chart to fill out for 23, 24, or 20, uh, in, I'm sorry, for 13, 14, or 15. Here's an example. Notice that the A represents the as is current state, B represents the to be future state. And each one of these boxes are divided by quarters in terms of what will happen in each quarter to achieve the vision. So what were the meeting rules distributed in advance and placed on the wall in, form, in the form of a uh, poster? Here they are. Because it's a safety meeting, that is normal. But here's one. Mobile phones on vibrate. How rude it is when a student in a face-to-face -face classroom starts a text conversation with a, a buddy. That won't happen in business. You all know that if you're in a virtual class, that would lead to serious consequences. Because it's disrespectful to others who have opinions, who are trying to share their opinions. It shows that you're not here mentally and you're not 
participating. Here's one. Get to the point. Don't make a speech. And on a virtual meeting, remember, there are those out there in other countries and other time zones listening in and ready to participate. Look at this agenda. It is exceptionally detailed. First, it gives the objectives for the meeting. Notice that each objective, objective is in an active verb, an action verb. Then it's broken down by day one, day two, day three, with the specific activities of the day, ending with a group dinner at the end of each day. Then an even more specific daily agenda with the topic, the amount of time allotted, the beginning time, and the discussion leader. This meeting is structured, organized, and thought out in advance. And the activity that we will examine was what Bruce led during lunch, a gallery walk. He handed out a piece of paper that gave the session, the time during lunch, the expected outcomes, and the process. Let's look at the process. The posters prepared by team leads were up on the wall, and members from other teams circulated through looking at the posters and with their post-its thinking about the areas Bruce laid out for them, placed a question or a comment on each poster. Following, there was discussion, response to the questions, and a discussion. For example, remember the poster that uh, this team lead was to populate with pictures? Here is a poster populated with two pictures of the two people and four questions up here or comments by other people in the audience. Then the team lead has to respond to these four questions in a discussion format. Down at the bottom you remember the poster of A as is to B and the various years, the various quarters, and here you can see four people have left questions or comments that the team lead must address. The first year you can see it is divided into uh, uh, quarters. Notice that this business process assess its own effectiveness. This one had a question posted on it. Same here, a question. The outcome of the meeting, near the end of the meeting, is an action plan. And here's an example. Here's the item. Here's the timing. Here's the lead. Here are the resources that are required in order to accomplishment. This was from, 19, for, from 2013, the previous year. Green means it, it happened. Red means it failed. Then the discussion is around why did the assessment of training needs fail? Why is it in trouble? What do we do about that? And team leaders must revise the posters and send out the answers to the issues and questions posted 
to the participants. That's a form of accountability. What about the learning support materials? Just as communication messages are delivered in different modalities, so are the training materials. This, for example, was a poster of 10 questions to ask to avoid specific injuries. This was the booklet form for a pocket with the same 10 questions. At the end, there was a thank you and a memento presentation, giving something tangible to folks to walk away with to show and tell about when they return to their workplace. In this case, it was an exceptionally clever. It was a coin, a coin that the Bruce presented to each team leader with a little comment about the work that they have done. This was the coin purchased through the geo through a government mint, mint organization. This is the uh, the brochure, and this was this year's coin, an angel, an angel for safety. This is the third year in the tradition of the previous two years of providing a coin. Why well, consider this an example of a best meeting practice? Well, Bruce received a special recognition award immediately following this meeting. It was organized and structured. The pre-work inherently made the meeting information and decision focused. People got up and walked around and did stuff. They spoke to one another individually. I'm sorry, in, in pairs and in groups. And Bruce provided examples of the pre-work that the team leads were expected to accomplish. The gallery walk was during lunch with instructions. Lunch is where you, people usually begin to tune out. Well, he had them tuned in and engaged. And there's built-in ac accountability for the follow-up because of the written public action plans and the team lead requirement to revise the poster and answer the questions and issues raised by participants by writing an email. I hope this 13 minute video has offered food for thought about how meetings are organized and how meetings are conducted.